February 18th. We are beginning an eight-week series of studies on uh, Christianity's family tree, what other Christians believe, and why. It should be an interesting uh, study. It begins uh, a week from Tuesday on February 18th. Uh, next Sunday, we need to bring back the baby bottles for the uh, Cherish House uh, project. Uh, if you uh, have not taken a bottle yet and would like to do that, there are more back on the back table there, and you are welcome to take one, but we ask you to uh, return it uh, next uh, Sunday. Then also, uh, be re remember that the Sportsman's Banquet is coming up on uh, April 5th. And we are getting ready for that, and uh, part of that uh, process of getting ready is prayer. And there is a prayer time on uh, Wednesdays at 8 o'clock in the lounge. And if you'd like to join, uh, you are welcome to do that. This afternoon at 3 o'clock, Pastor Luke Scouten is going to be installed as the pastor at um, uh, First Reformed Church in Sibley. I've been asked to preach for that service. And it'll be a happy time as um, uh, last year I had the privilege of serving there as their transition pastor. And now we see the completion of our work in installing uh, Pastor Luke this afternoon. Uh, but uh, uh, members of other churches, of course, are welcome as, uh, to attend that as well. That's at 3 o'clock at First Reformed Church at Sibley. Let's now stand and greet each other, welcome each other to the house of God. Let us give praise to God by singing hymn number 17, hymn number 17. may be seated. In our prayers, we want to continue to remember Stacy Stoffrin. She is still in the hospital in Minneapolis. I've talked with her husband, and he said that uh, they hope that she can come home by Friday. 
Uh, Garrett Vanderplatz, I'll move to the uh, Pleasant Acres home in Hull uh, this week. So please remember him and other concerns that come to your hearts and minds. Let's be joined together in prayer. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we come into your presence, first of all, with prayers of praise and of thanksgiving. We realize that you are a great God and greatly to be praised. Your mercies are new every morning. Your faithfulness is very great. We praise you that we can put our trust and confidence in you, that you are dependable, you are ever faithful, you are merciful toward your people. We thank you that you have shown the fullness of your love by sending Jesus to be our Savior. We thank you that in him we have the forgiveness of sin and the assurance of abundant and eternal life. We praise you that you have been with us, for you have promised never to leave us or forsake us to be with us even to the end of the world. We thank you that you call us and claim us to be your people through faith in Jesus Christ. And we thank you for your word, for your precious promises, for the gift of your spirit who abides with us, who is the comforter and counselor, the guide and friend. We thank you that you have blessed us richly, for we live in a wealthy land, and you have given to us much, both physically as well as spiritually. We thank you for your many gifts to us. We thank you for this congregation, for its history and heritage, and for its ongoing ministry. We thank you for all the opportunities that are given for worship and service and fellowship. We ask that you would help us to live in your ways. You would help us to seek your kingdom, to desire those things that would bring glory and honor and praise to you. We pray for each family and member of the congregation. We pray for those, Father, who are elderly and who are confined to their nursing homes or to their own homes. Give to them your strength and comfort and blessing. We pray for each adult, for each parent, for each young person and child. Be near to each one, we pray. Help us all to grow in the things of your Spirit, to do those things that would glorify you, and to live in such a way that your people are encouraged and strengthened and blessed. We pray today for Stacy Stopperin. Be near to her and to her family. We pray that you will give healing and strengthening. We ask that she may soon be able to return home again. Be with Garrett Vanderplatz in the adjustment to the nursing home. Be with uh, all who are confined to the nursing homes. We pray, Father, that you will uh, be with us as we seek for your direction and guidance and leading in the search process, and in the process of determining your will. We pray that we may be sensitive and open to listen to one another and to you, and to be able to discern the leading of your spirit. We pray for the congregations of our classes and today for First Reformed Church at Sibley as they install their new pastor. Bless this relationship. We pray that the church may go forward and may be used of you for your glory, for the work of your kingdom. We ask your blessing upon the sportsman's banquet. We pray for your blessing that it too may be a tool in your hand to uh, reach those who are uncommitted, that it may be able to be a blessing to all who are a part of it. 
We pray for our nation, for our leaders. Give wisdom and direction. We ask that you would help us to seek you as a nation. Help us to turn from evil. And help us then to live in obedience to you. Father, we pray for your guidance today as we worship together, as we seek to hear and understand your word, and as we seek then to live according to it. We pray that you would empower us and lead us by your spirit. Guide us as we worship today, and we ask these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Today you're going to be the special music, so if you have a favorite hymn that you'd like for us to sing, uh, why don't you raise your hand or call out the number and we'll sing your favorite. Anyone? 524, okay. 524. Let's turn to 524. It took a miracle. Okay, let's just sing uh, verse 1. We'll just sing verse 1 of 524. a hand way in the back. Did you have a favorite back there? Okay, standing on the promises. Thank you. 271, a wonderful hymn. Thank you for sharing that. 271. We'll sing uh, verses 1 and 4 of 271.
have any other favorites? Thank you, 473. Let's turn to 473. Victory in Jesus. This is a wonderful hymn. Uh, let's sing verses uh, 1 and 3, 473. Please stand and sing together the doxology. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you that uh, we can daily worship you and praise you. And Lord, we just thank you for this place that we can come together and worship and praise you. Lord, you continue to bless us. We thank you for uh, this offering. We continue uh, at, to ask for your blessing upon us and also to the deacons and consistory as we distribute these gifts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sing together the hymn number 274, Break Thou the Bread of Life, 274.
You may be seated. Elaine, I think you prepared a offering, offertory. Why don't you play that for us now? And then we can all enjoy that. Let's, let's do that. Thank you. That blessed my heart, and I'm sure it blessed yours too. As we hear the uh, familiar hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness, and uh, thank you for uh, sharing that with us uh, today. Let us now turn to the reading of the scripture, uh, John chapter 6, reading verses 22 through 40. We are continuing our study of the Lord's Prayer. Uh, today we are Thinking on the line, give us this day our daily bread. Here now from John chapter 6, beginning with verse 22. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the opposite shore of the lake realized that only one boat had been there and that Jesus had not entered it with his disciples, but that they had gone away alone. Then some boats from Tiberias landed near the place where the people had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. Once the crowd realized that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum in search of Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, you are looking for me, not because you saw miraculous signs, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. On him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, what must we do to do the works God requires? Jesus answered, The work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, What miraculous sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our forefathers ate the manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. 
The bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives a life to the world. Sir, they said, from now on, give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. As I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. This is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all that he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So ends the reading of God's holy and inspired word. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this place where we come and worship you today. and We thank you for your word. Please be with Pastor Bruce as he brings us this word, and may we use it in our lives, Lord. And may everything we say and do be to your honor and glory, which we ask in your Savior's name. Amen. Thank you, Roger. I put in your bulletin today an outline. I thought rather than have it up on the screen, we would try to have it in your bulletin so that uh, you are able to take it home. And there are spaces there. If you want to take any notes, you may uh, do that as well. Why do we need to pray? Give us this day our daily bread. Most of us have plenty of bread. We have bread in our cupboards or our freezers. If we run short of bread, we can easily go to the store and get more. Our problem usually is not a lack of bread or of food, but we have the other problem of having too much and eating too much. We hear all the time about the problems of obesity in our country. People are overfed, overweight. We eat too much. And yet we pray this prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. Think about that line today. Why did Jesus ask us to pray this prayer? And why do we need to continue to pray this line? When we think about this line, we are now entering into the second part of the Lord's Prayer. The first part is basically about God's concerns. First of all, we pray that God's name would be hallowed, that God's kingdom would come, and that God's will would be done. It's not first about, about us, about what we want or our agenda or our concerns, but first of all, it's about what God desires. His name is to be hallowed. His will is to be done. His kingdom is to come. But after we've prayed those prayers, then Jesus said we should turn to our own concerns. We should pray about our daily concerns, such as bread, food, physical things. And then he said we also ought to pray about forgiveness. That too is a basic need that we all have. Then we should pray, too, for help in times of temptation. We should pray first for provision. We should pray for pardon. And we should pray for protection. 
In this prayer, we pray for provision. And the theme for us today is that God satisfies our bodies, our souls, and our eternal lives. Think about those three things. First of all, God gives to us the bread that satisfies our bodies. Jesus said these statements just after he had, the day before, fed the 5,000. You know the story. The crowd was gathered there, and Jesus saw that they were hungry, and he asked his disciples, how will we feed these people? One disciple said eight months' wages would not be enough even to give them one bite. And then Andrew came forward with the, small, with the young boy who had the five loaves and the two fish. But Andrew, too, said, what are they among so many? Jesus took those five loaves and those two fish, and he blessed them, and he multiplied them, and he fed the entire crowd. He not only fed the crowd, but he produced more than enough. There were, at the end, 12 baskets left over full of food. In the Old Testament, God had also performed the miracle of the manna. The children of Israel were in the desert. They became hungry. And God told Moses the plan that he would feed them with the manna. When they went out in the morning, there was the morning dew and in the dew, there was the white, that was the manna. And for 40 years, God kept this up day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, so that God's people were fed. Have you ever thought about how much that would equal? I haven't figured it out, but I read this this past week that there were probably two to three million people at that time. They were each to have an omer, which is a two quarts worth. So two quarts per person would make it about two billion quarts per year. And then that times the 40 years, about 80 billion quarts of manna over the 40 years. And this person also figured out that if one quart filled the space of a square foot, that when the manna was spread out, it covered the equal of 266 football fields. That's the kind of God that we worship and serve. A God who is able, as the New Testament says, able to do far more abundantly than we can even ask or imagine. He was able to feed the 5,000. He was able to feed the children of Israel in the wilderness. And he is able to meet our needs. When we pray, give us this day our daily bread, we are saying that we are dependent upon God. We realize that we can go to our cupboard or our freezer or our store for bread. But we realize also that God is the ultimate source behind it. We realize that farmers can plant and sow. But only God can send the rain and the sunshine. We realize that farmers can have the biggest tractors the most up-to-date equipment. 
They can have the best seed and the best fertilizers. They can have all the technology. And yet we're dependent on God for rain and sunshine. The ultimate source behind it all is God himself. We acknowledge our dependence on God, not just for bread, but for all our physical needs. Someone has said that this prayer, this line in the Lord's Prayer, is perhaps the most difficult line for modern man to pray. Perhaps especially for us here in the United States where we have so much. People become self-satisfied, self-sufficient. They lose their sense of dependence upon God. They say, I can live by myself. I have what I need, and therefore why consider my dependence on God? So perhaps this is the most difficult line for people to pray because of our self-sufficient nature. But we must not forget God. And Jesus wants us to recognize that in this prayer. Give us this day. Each day we are dependent upon Him for life and the gifts of life. We need to acknowledge that life itself is from Him that he is the source and the author, and that we are part of his creation. We are creatures, and he is the creator, and we are dependent on him. This prayer is not trying to twist God to give us what we want, but rather it's taking hold of God's willingness to give. Realizing that we have a gracious God, an almighty God, an all-powerful God, one who is able to meet our needs. No concern is too small for God. The God of the universe, the God whose name we hallow, whose kingdom we pray for, whose will we ask to be done is also concerned about our daily bread, our daily needs. First of all, this is a prayer for bread, for our bodies. But secondly, it's also a prayer for bread for our souls. Jesus In his answer to the people said, I tell you the truth, you are looking for me not because you saw miraculous signs, but because you ate the bread and had your foot filled. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. Jesus was telling his disciples that there is bread beyond the physical needs. There are needs deeper than what we have on the surface. Jesus is telling us that we need to depend on him to meet those deep needs. In Matthew chapter 4, Jesus was tempted by Satan. Three times over, Satan came to him with temptations. And each time, Jesus answered by quoting from Scripture. And the first temptation was that he should take the stones and change them into bread. Now, Jesus certainly could have done that. And Jesus was hungry. He had fasted for 40 days in the wilderness. But Jesus resisted the temptation and 
he said to Satan, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And Jesus was realizing that life is not just physical. There are needs beyond the physical. There, uh, we have greater needs. And he is able to satisfy the needs of our heart. People may try to meet those spiritual needs with physical things. People try it all the time. They try to satisfy the hunger of the heart with alcohol. And they hope that that drink will help them to deal with their guilt or with their feelings of lostness or loneliness. Or they turn to drugs. A famous actor this week died of drug overdose. And he had all the things that this world can offer, all the physical things that anyone would want, and yet there was a hunger in his heart, in his life, that he was trying to satisfy with drugs. Or else possessions. We can try to fill our lives with possessions to bring satisfaction. And the cravings of the heart desire something, some meaning, some purpose, some, something that will help us through life. But these things all come short. One drink desires another and another and another until it becomes an addiction. One drug brings the desire for another. There is never any satisfaction. The longing, the thirsting of the heart cannot be filled with physical things. And Jesus is telling us that he can satisfy those deep needs. This is to be a daily prayer. Every day we are to go back to God again and again and say, I can't live life by myself. Rather, daily I come to you, Lord, for the, the bread that I need. I come to you to give me the needs of my heart. Not just physical bread, but spiritual bread. The bread that will satisfy my heart and my soul. And we pray daily, Lord, for that. What are some of those deeper needs? Well, there's the need for grace. In Hebrews, we have this invitation to pray and to receive grace from God. As we deal with life and as we try to make our way in relationships and as we deal with situations we need that we need grace in hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 we read this let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. We all need grace as we deal with relationships, as we deal with circumstances and situations. We need grace toward ourselves, to forgive ourselves, to live with ourselves, to live with others. That's part of the bread that God will give to us when we ask. We also need the fruit of the Spirit. Those nine qualities, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. We can't get those out of a bottle. That We can't get them from a prescription or from a drug. 
They are the fruit of the Spirit. The Spirit gives these. This is part of the true bread that we receive. We need wisdom. We all need wisdom for the living of our lives. Over the years, I've probably prayed for wisdom more than any other prayer. Wisdom to prepare messages. Wisdom to lead a consistory. Wisdom to set a good example. Wisdom to live my life, to make good decisions. I've prayed for wisdom and for love. Lord, help me to love you. To love you with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then to love others as myself. When we pray those prayers, God promises to answer. James chapter 1 verse 5 says this. If anyone lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. Those are some of the the bread that we receive from God, grace and love and wisdom. The fruit of the Spirit. Then also consider how God satisfies with us uh, bread for us for our eternal lives. Jesus said, I am the true bread. I am the bread that satisfies you for eternity, for eternal life. Now, when he was, seek, he was speaking that, he was not only referring to life beyond death. That's part of it. But he was also speaking about a quality of life even now. Eternal life is not just length of years, but it is also quality of years. Jesus was saying, I want to give you that eternal life even now. When we think of this bread, it's not just the question, what is this bread? Rather, who is your bread? Where do you find your satisfaction for life now and for all eternity? Who are you trusting in? Where do you find the satisfaction for yourself? And where do you find your salvation? It's, it's bread, it's food that gives us life, that gives us strength and health, that keeps us living. Without it, we could not survive. We would die. And without the true bread, without Jesus Christ, we have no hope. Our spirits would die. We would have no hope of eternal life. He's the satisfaction for our souls. Trust him. There's nothing so good as fresh bread. When it's baked, there's that aroma that comes from the oven. Satisfies us. Jesus says he's that bread, that bread for our our bodies, the bread for our souls, the bread for eternal life. He invites us to come to him to eat and be satisfied. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for these words. We thank you that You are that true bread that satisfies us now and for all eternity. 
You are the bread that we can partake of, the bread that gives us life. Help us to trust you, to depend on you for the things of this life and for all eternity. Lord, forgive us when we have been self-sufficient, when we've been self-satisfied, when we have not looked to you, but have looked to only the things of this life and of this world. Forgive us when we have been unappreciative, when we have not been thankful. Help us to respond in gratitude for all of your good gifts. For you are our true bread. In Jesus' name, amen. Please turn to hymn number 501. Number 501. We'll sing verses 1 through 4 before the benediction and verse five after, especially notice verse three, we taste thee, O thou living bread, and long to feast upon thee still, we drink of thee the fountainhead, and thirst our souls from thee to fill. Let's stand to sing verses one through four. Thou joy of love. peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and forevermore. Amen.